My name is Gordon Goldsboro of the Manitoba Historical Society. And I'm Morgana Malian, a local historian and researcher. Together, we're teaming up to learn more about the rich history of this province. And explore heritage sites that are definitely off the beaten path. This is Hidden Manitoba. In this episode, we are visiting the Salem Methodist Church. I am researching the Salem Methodist Church, which was built near the small community of Blair, Manitoba. So I found out a little bit in some local history books is where I was able to get a little bit more information and there was just very, very quick blurbs. There wasn't really a lot on its history. And I think that's pretty normal for a church sort of of this nature. It was just a place for people to gather when they had time and it's not like it was sort of the center of one specific community. With the church not being located in the center of a large community, information on much of its history is relatively sparse or inaccessible. However, I was able to find some small details which allow us to piece together its origins. The church was constructed by local stonemasons around 1898, uh, just sort of in a farmer's field. So it was just sort of this lone standing church that rural uh, farmers and their families would come to. It was likely that they would probably gather there once every second Sunday or maybe once a month whenever people would have time. The interesting find for this site was the people who were the catalyst for its beginning. It was organized by three local farmers in the community, uh, William Thomas and Robert Haney. As with most research for this time, census records can give us valuable information on the people associated with this building. So I'm going to go on to Ancestry.ca, which um, allows access to all of the Canadian census records up until 1921, and I'm going to see if I can find out a little bit more about their family history and sort of who they are. I'm seeing a census listing in the 1891 Census of Canada for Thomas Haney. So I'm just going to open that up and we're going to see what it can tell us about him. He was aged 31. Uh, it says he was born in Ontario and he's of Irish descent. Uh, lists his religion as Methodist, which makes sense because um, him and his brothers were responsible for bringing about the Methodist Church and it lists his occupation as a farmer. I'm at the site of the Salem Methodist Church, northwest of Oak Lake, Manitoba. Quite a lot of old buildings in rural Manitoba tend to get torn down and just last fall a church not far from here was demolished. So I worried that this old church might have gone down too, but so it's really exciting that it's still standing. I was at this church a number of years ago and from a first look it still seems to be in good shape. What's so impressive about this church is how solid it is. The fact that they have all these flat stones is so impressive. People often wonder, where did they get all these big flat stones? Well, the reality is they didn't. They didn't have big flat stones. What they had were all the stones that are out here strewn across the prairie, the big rounded stones. What they would do is the stonemason would split them in half and create two flat sides on the inside, and then they would take one of those halves of the stone and face it outwards. The other one would face inwards. The space in between the stones would be filled with kind of loose rubble. So what we're seeing here is the sort of the center of a stone facing out. There'd be another one on the inside of the church building and then the rubble in between. So these, these walls are really quite thick. This building was really built to last. Uh, you can see that they have the mortar between the individual stones. It looks like it may have been repaired at some time. Some of the mortars, it looks a little newer than the rest but uh, it's still in great shape. Structurally, it looks like it's just as solid as the day that it was built. Not all of the church is faring as well as the stone walls, though. The roof was repaired about 50 years ago. 
but it looks like those repairs are nearing the end of their lifespan. Typically, one of the first things that happens in an old building as it deteriorates is the shingles fall off. But once that happens, the water can get through. Once the water gets in, then it really starts to deteriorate. Uh, I, I, I had heard that the roof had been restored back in the 1960s uh, by some local folks. Uh, and uh, it looks like that roof is now really starting to deteriorate. There, you can see there's a hole up in the middle of the roof over there. There's another hole over there. Those sorts of holes are bad. Those are the things that'll cause the roof to fail and eventually the whole building will go. Churches like this one would have served as the lifeblood of the community in many ways. When the homesteaders are first arrived here, their first priority, of course, was to create a home for themselves, to establish a farm, but then it was to establish uh, the basis of a community. They wanted a school for their children. Uh, they wanted a church for their spiritual needs. And this building would have been the center of the community, but it's probably also where they would have had local meetings. Uh, they may have had picnics around the grounds here. This would have truly been the place that everybody would consider the center of the community. So it's really sad to see it in such poor condition. The construction quality of this church is amazing, but I'm fearful that it may well be a man-made reason that it won't last too much longer. This stone wall has really stood the test of time. It's been here for over a hundred years, and it'll probably be here for a good long time yet if the municipality doesn't decide to tear it down. That's the threat. These old buildings are pretty solid, especially these walls. I'm not so sure about the, the roof, that's looking pretty shaky. But this wall, if it's properly looked after, would, could be here for another hundred years. I'm just worried because the municipality seems to think that these old buildings are a liability. They're worried that people will go inside and hurt themselves. And so to avoid that potential problem, they're tearing these buildings down. And we're losing, I think, a very intrinsic part of the community. We're losing this, this heart of what was once a thriving agricultural area of Western Manitoba. With the right type of planning, enough hard work, and a little luck, this Methodist church might just survive for future generations to see what early life was like on the prairies. Mm -hmm.